All right, welcome to today's Book of the Day show, talking about Twitter with the man who knows more about Twitter than anybody except maybe the founders of Twitter. I actually think I know more than the founders. <laughs> you know what? That's good. That's good. Because the, they don't talk to each other, and I did. So, you know, I, w- I would put it out there that I probably know a, a little more than them in some respects. Awesome. Nick Bilton, his book's a New York Times bestseller, Hatching Twitter. This is the real story. And... uh so much of twi- you know Twitter. It's interesting because I do a lot on Twitter now. You know, in terms of posting, and um, I just had a tweet I did go viral. It got like eight eight thousand favorites and retweets. And Twitter, it's almost become just part of something you have to do as a business person. Uh, it's just part of. It's like Facebook. Yeah, it's, it's become so ubiquitous that. This billion, what's the worth of, what's the value on, on Twitter now? Well, it's right now it's around 17, 18 billion, but that's because it's at a, a very low point because of all the CEO troubles I've been having. Right. Uh, but, you know, at its high, it was, you know, uh, almost double that. Um, so uh, um, it's a, uh, it, it, I think it'll get back up into the 28 billion range um, once they solve a few, a few issues they're having. Yeah. Well, I think, so... I just read the book. I kind of reread it last night in preparation for talking to you. My overarching feel is like, it's a good story. You know, a lot of people say, Ty, do you want a business partner? And I'm always like, yeah, business partners are usually, you read this book and it's you like, don't want a business I don't know partner. if you want a business partner. No, it's interesting because, you know, the, what I think the reason so many people really enjoyed reading the book was because it's not written, it's a business story, but it's written like a murder mystery. Right. And Yeah, it's an uh, interesting read. Um, Make you, sure you pick this up. It, it'll keep you entertained. It's not a It's I, not a boring story. I know I had a lot of, I mean, I get tweets every day from people that say that they, they are reading the book or they read the book or whatever, and most of them read it in a flight, uh, which right. which is painful considering how much work I put into it, but it's also <laughs> amazing because they it's, it's, that, it's that dramatic that they were able to continue to turn the page. I actually did study a lot about how to write murder mysteries okay. when I wrote the book because I felt like that's what it was. Yeah. Because you have you have these four founders, um, Noah, Glass, Evan Williams, Jack Dorsey, and Biz Stone that accidentally, completely by accident, made this company. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then they subsequently went through and kicked each other out one by one by one by one by one. And right. none of them were left. It's almost like Game of Thrones. Oh, it's absolutely great. It's, it's like just, Game of Thrones. You watch HBO's Game of Thrones and it's like every time you get attached to a character, they die. Yeah. Yeah. So well, this is like this one's like every time one of them is a CEO, he's no longer the did CEO. You, did you ever see somebody uh, I posted on social media last year? Uh, they took the Game of Thrones books and they put a little color post it note every time someone was killed in the book. Okay. And so there's this pile of books with hundreds of post it notes. I thought about doing that with this book for every time someone was fired. Yeah. And I actually started doing it and there was, there was dozens and dozens of post it notes. Now, let's start at the beginning. So yeah. we have. So. The two main characters, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, are really Evan, yep. who was, uh, and Jack Dorsey. Correct. Now, okay, one of the questions I get a lot in, in terms of business, I have this accelerator, is like, should I tell people my idea because it'll get stolen? And I tell them in general, that's not what the idea, if it's so easy of an idea, it's going to get stolen anyway. Yeah. But... What happens is you got to be careful once the company's up and running. And and so I feel like Jack Dorsey is really the one who had the idea. Well, that's the that's the story that's been told. Right? But didn't he have in, in the book, didn't he have... So the he co- had the idea, but okay. But I mean, if you go back to, to in the middle of the book, um, and not to give it away to the people that haven't read it yet, but actually not in the middle, in the, in the beginning of the book, there's a moment where Noah Glass, um, who has is a, is, um, helped co-found a company that, that spawned Twitter. Noah Glass and Jack Dorsey are drunk and they've right. been out drinking and they've been dancing at a rave and they are talking about these ideas about loneliness and, and how they want to solve that and allow friends to connect. And Jack has this idea that is, what if people could do that through text messages? Yes, the status, the status idea. idea kind of. Which is great. It's brilliant. Yeah. But what Noah did was Noah took it and said, yeah, but that's not very human. It's not, right. you know... It's almost like computers talking to each other or fax machines. What if you were to come up with these ways to, to, to humanize it? And so he came up with the name Twitter right. and he came up with the... And he's one. He's somebody who kind of cut out. How, how much is the net worth of all four of them? Well, so the net worth of... It, it's, well, it's, this is the, you know, the, the crux of the story is that 
that they all were there when they started. They yes. were all in the room together. But it's and not 25% each. It was not 25% <laughs> each. So Ev was the money guy, which is right. a, a lesson that a lot of a lot of people in business should really learn about, about how much the money guys should actually have access to and, um, and how much they get. Because he put in, company. what, 250000 or something? He like put that? in like two fifty to, to to push the company along. Um, and, and what then, equity did he get? Well, that? he ended up owning about 60%, 70% of the yeah, company. Yeah, it was like 70 um, and, and Noah Glass got... Got one percent, which yeah. he, he sold a, a lot of early, very early on. Uh, Biz got about two percent. Jack got about twenty percent. So today, fast forward after dilution and all these other things that happen with startups, um, Jack is worth about uh, three four billion dollars. Not bad. Um, so Ev is worth good. about four or five billion dollars. Biz Stone made about fifty to one hundred million, and um, and Noah Glass got nothing. I always feel like you know. If you make a billion dollars and there's somebody, go back, wire them five billion dollars. Have you thought of that? When I when the book came out, um, you know, Jack Dorsey got a lot of flack from from people because they were they were like, "Hey, look, you know, this guy contributed a lot to the story and he's been completely written out of it." I said to I was talking to one of Jack's PR people and I was like, "Just give the guy ten million dollars." Yeah, everyone would be like, "Jack's a hero! Yay!" Like it's literally change between your couch. Yeah, for someone who has that much money. But that was kind of in the Steve Jobs story where Steve Jobs cut. If you've seen, not that it's the most accurate movie, but if you've seen Ashton Kutcher's Jobs, you know it's just. I didn't watch it. I'm I'm not a big Ashton Kutcher. You're not a big. He plays him very well. They look similar. They they do look similar. Yeah, I'll give him that. You give him that. Not your favorite actor, but. Um, so one of the things I wrote, so I always write my notes in the back. So yeah. I mean, one of the things that caught my eye for somebody watching and listening now, one of the great lessons, the good about these guys, because always yeah. anytime you dissect anybody, yeah. you find all these flaws. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I think it was, was it Tolstoy or Dostoevsky who said, you know, all happy families are happy in the same way and all unhappy families are unhappy in a million different ways. So if you focus, I, I don't like to just focus on dysfunction, even though it's a fascinating part of the book. The good thing, Jack Dorsey was an experimenter. Like you talk about they it. They all work. But, no, but they, he was, yeah. I mean, to the extreme. Yeah, he was to the he extreme. He had this shirt that yeah. had a phone number. He put his phone number, he put it on a shirt and just walked down the street Waiting to see how many people would call, call him. And yeah. they would. And yeah. it was like awkward, like you yeah. said. But see, that this book here is an interesting book about self-made billionaires. And one of the things that they, their conclusion, those researchers, is that it's habits of the mind. Mm-hmm. Just like Arnold Schwarzenegger had habits in the gym yep. to change his body. Yep. And I can't help but think the most people are afraid of experiments. Yeah. So uh, when you're not afraid of experiments, sure, your first one experiment is a dumb one. You're sure. But the next one... After a hundred of those become well, Twitter. Said, that's yeah, but I mean, essentially, that's that's Silicon Valley. It's 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 a it's one giant petri dish, um, yes. and a lot of experiments are really silly, um, and probably shouldn't get the funding it get they get. And a lot of experiments are great ideas, but happen at the wrong time. You know, Instagram was not the first photo sharing service. Yeah, uh, and it didn't it was, even start out as a photo sharing. It didn't even start out as a photo sharing service, but it it came along. Right at the moment that the iPhone camera was just good enough that you could take a picture and slap a filter on to make it look better. And it was square. And, and that was what helped it go viral. And Jack Dorsey actually helped it go viral because he was an investor in it. But, um, huh. he but pushed Twitter it was not the first text messaging service like this. There was a thing called Text Mob. There were all these different things. It's, it's, about, you know, it's about that experimentation. But it, it's as, as I learned reporting this book, it's about, it's about the moment that you put that experiment out to the world. And right. if you do it too too early, it'll just fade away. No one will use it. And if you do it too late, you're too late. Yeah. Yeah, I just talked about that on the board there. I had nudist Buddhist principle, which was Alan Nation, one of my mentors, told me, he said, Ty, you could tell all your friends you're a nudist. And they'll be like, that's weird, but they'll still accept you. And you can tell your friends you're a Buddhist. And they'll be like, that's a little weird. We'll accept you. But you can't tell them you're a nudist, nudist Buddhist. Buddhist. It's too weird. <laughs> so, like, you can be ahead of your time. <clears throat> yeah. And you can be too late. And that's somewhat the luck factor. But... Like what I also liked in the book is the pre story. So Evan started Blogger. Blogger. This well, was Evan, his first Evan thing. Evan didn't just start Blogger. He he was one of the pioneers of blogging. Yeah. You know, I mean, what's fascinating about Evan's story is that he is, I mean, they're all fascinating, you know, but uh, the, the Evan um, came from a small town in Nebraska, a farm town. He grew up on a farm and he literally has been one of the most influential people in uh, in, in technology, you know, for the last 10 years, just when it comes to blogging and, and, and online messaging and, and, and social media. 
Yeah. yeah. So he had a circle of confidence. So he had a lot stating. of experiments. So like yeah. Evan had a really great one where when he was in high school, he found out about the internet. He loved computers always. They all did. You know, Jack loved computers. He used to work on his dad's and Biz worked on his neighbor's computer and, and so on. Um, but Ev had this great idea when the internet was just kind of coming about. No one really knew what it was. He decided with a buddy of his, they, they, got, they rented a VHS video recorder and they sat in a library in front of a square computer uh, screen and they, they talked to people about what the internet was. And then they created this VHS and they went around knocking on people's doors trying to sell them a VHS tape explaining huh. what the internet was. That, you know, like they all had these kind of this entrepreneurial spirit yeah. that, uh, that led them to where they got to. But, but Evan then created, ended up in San Francisco, created Blogger, which Google bought and, and the money that but he didn't got. didn't buy for much. Was it five or 10 no, million dollars? Yeah, I think it was about 40 million, 20 million, something give or take. But, um, they, uh, he ended up getting about 10 million out of the it deal. It was an earn out. He had to stay working. He had there. to stay working there. He hated Google. He hated yeah. the culture. He thought, felt it was, it was like a very cutthroat world. And, and I, you know, talk about and tell the story of him when he first arrived in San Francisco. He was living, you know, this is one of the things I find really amazing for people that that don't know, you know, how they're going to end up in that at that level that they want to be. That whether it's being a billionaire or running a, a, a successful company, whatever it is. Like Evan, who's worth five billion dollars, when he first moved out there, he was living atop a garage, right, six hundred dollars a month in the studio. And I saw the place like it was not pretty. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he worked hard and he came up with ideas. And Jack Dorsey, Jack arrived in San Francisco with blue dreadlocks. And his job was literally writing C code um, for the ticketing machines when people used to go to Alcatraz and they would buy the, the boat wow. ticket. Really? He wrote the, the code that would print the ticket and that was what you paid for. And so, you know, they all started there and now look where they are. Now, one of the things, so as the story evolves, yeah, one of the core parts of the book is this whole complete dysfunctional breakdown yeah. where one guy gets nothing. The two main people are at each other's throat. Mm -hmm. How'd this thing end up? Like what, what was the most crisis uh, event and where are they right now in terms of, do they talk? Are they friends anymore? Are they enemies and well, lawyers advising you know, them not to speak to each other? It's interesting because when I first started writing the book, not, none of the guys wanted to talk to me. None of the founders, they were all kind of afraid because the story that they had told was not the real story. And, and I didn't know that when I first started writing the book. I knew it was a fun story, but I didn't realize just how dramatic it was. Um, uh, but they, you know, eventually they all ended up talking to me for quite considerable lengths of time. And and what and it was sad because they they were legitimately friends in the beginning, and by the yeah. end they were definitely not. They yeah. all resented each other. Biz, who is kind of you know the Kramer of the group, you know, he's a comedian. He's like always trying to like make sure that there's no turmoil between people. He um, uh, he's still friends with some of them, but you know Noah Glass was kicked out very early, and and he was essentially completely written out of the story of huh. Twitter. Um, uh, his name was not mentioned in the S one. Um, it's not mentioned in the corporate history yet. If it wasn't for him, it wouldn't exist. Um, if it wasn't for any of them, it wouldn't exist. But today, um, you now have a company that is once again back in a, in, a, in a tumultuous state where the CEO stepped down recently, and they have Jack Dorsey back as the interim. Why do you CEO. think why? And Jack Dorsey, by the way, has gone on to start Square. Square yep. So he's made a billion dollars. This is his second billion dollar company. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> now, um, why, why the CEO is fighting. What's the deal now? Is Twitter going to be uh, run by Jack Dorsey? And why did that CEO get kicked out? Well, uh, Dick Coslo, who is who was the last CEO. And I mean, th th that also, also like, you know, part of what makes this such a dramatic story is that it's a almost 10 year old company that's had, you know, almost as many like right. leaders, so, yeah. you know, it's like 10 um, CEOs in had, 10 years. Well, they, so they had Noah Glass who ran it first, then Jack Dorsey, then Jack got kicked out by Ev. Ev ran it. Jack had a coup to kick out Ev. <laughs> you know, then Dick like came in. Dick was best friends with Ev. It's like, it's, it's days of our lives, but a big business story. But I always say, you know, Genghis Khan went to war with horses and bow and arrows. Now people go to war with business and lawyers. Yeah, absolutely. Well, these guys went to lower social media. Yeah, you know, I went to war with social media. Um, uh, so, um, so now you know it's 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 back in its state. But what's really fascinating about the story is that it you know one of the guys in the in the book, this guy Jason Goldman, who was kind of like the fifth Beatle, he said to me in an interview, he said, you know, it's as it's as if we succeeded in spite of ourselves. Right. And um, and another great quote about the about the story was um, Mark Zuckerberg once said about Twitter. 
It's like they had a clown car, they drove into a gold mine and fell in. <laughs> that was the original title of the book was The Clown Car and the Gold Mine. But we, we, I like we catching like, Twitter. Yeah, catching <laughs> Twitter is good too. But, but the point, the reason I bring that up is because, you know, it is still succeeding in spite of itself. Yeah. It is still, you know, 300 million users. It is still talked about every single day. You know, there was, uh, I was reading the news this morning and literally every news article I read had at one point said, oh, X person on Twitter said, or Y person yeah. on Twitter said. And if you look at any story about well, Trump. Well, it's celebrity driven and celebrities are driving the it's world. It's not just celebrities. It's, it, I agree with you on that completely. It's, but it's also, it's influencer driven. And, yeah, and, but I call those the new celebrities. Yeah, like there's inf- it's not just Tom Cruise and exactly. You know who's fallen off Twitter is Paris Hilton. Her Twitter, like she gets on average 150 favorites. I get on average 400. It's crazy. Maybe how- she had a bunch of bots. I've written about all the bots. No, it's her real one. I think Kim Kardashian. I mean, you see, it's like a whole tabloid on Twitter. You yeah, can yeah. see this whole yeah. like Kanye West is popular and Kim Kardashian. They dominate it. It's like. Yeah. Well, you know, it's fascinating. To, to, is is the is the the Twitter wars between people? You know, like oh yeah, the, the, the Meek Mill. And yeah, what's the Con, was it Kanye? No, no. it was um, Drake. Drake, Drake and Meek Mill. Drake yeah. And Meek Mill yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Who would have thought in a world where it's like this is where people go to battle with I like know, 140, 140 characters. characters? Which is, I find, I find this really interesting. I, you know, that that um, there's a line in the book um, about where I say that um, you know that they they didn't actually. They didn't realize that, that within a hundred and forty character box that people could use it for anything from, you know, the 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 revolution that was happening in Iran and right. to help promote that Egypt to like and all that, yeah. to um to uh, selling you know food from a food truck and yeah. you know on Los Feliz Boulevard you know it's like do you think though Twitter is decreasing a little bit in like now there's Snapchat definitely has taken a lot of market share. And so, and and they bought. You see them. They bought Periscope, mm-hmm. which is the lo- Twitter did. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times, was that a defensive move? You think that they bought it just like Twitter was? I mean, well, fa- we're, we're Facebook bought to- Instagram and WhatsApp because those were killers. Yeah. Potential of Facebook. Do you think Twitter's we're, getting in that acquisition game now? Well, we're, we're moving to a world where you know, um, uh, well, Twitter's done a lot of acquisitions. You know, dozens and dozens and dozens of them. But we're moving to a world where. Um, uh, People want to stream video of the yeah. thing they're doing. Live. You know, if you ever live. use Periscope, it's pretty cool. I'm on um, there once in a while. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I use Snapchat. I haven't been using it lately just because I'm working on my next book, and that is the only thing I can really focus on. But but I use Snapchat Stories a lot. I really love it. It's, a, yeah. it's an amazing audience. And and you know when the the latest um, protests happened in, happened in Ferguson a few weeks ago, um, I was fascinated because I was watching the police on one side of the street, which I found on Twitter, you know, um, sharing their, the video from their perspective on, on Periscope and on the other side of the street with the protesters sharing Periscope video from their perspective. And if you watch the two together, you literally were getting right. the live view of what was taking place. And, and that doesn't, you know, you see that happen in, in news events, but you also see it happen at concerts and you see it happen in, at, at, um, at, at conferences and just everything. And it's, it's, you know, I think that, that Twitter recognizes that's that's the next the next stage of all this, and it's powerful. And we're, we're going to talk about that for those of you in the accelerator, my business stuff. Uh, we're going to do some specific talks on what this book has to teach about money, and not just this book, but your experience behind the scenes at Twitter. Uh, and we'll do that in separate videos. But on, today, as we talk about this in this show, question that I think is important for you. If you, because you kind of are inside of, of their minds somewhat, you've interviewed them and know the story. What do you think is the biggest life lesson Evan, Jack, and you take away from this story in Hatching Twitter? If you got to apply one thing practically to your life, what that's, would it be? That's a good question. <laughs> I've done a lot of interviews for this book, that, but no one's ever asked me that question. Um, uh, well, I think that Jack learned... And I can't speak for them now, but I can speak from them from what, when I interviewed them for the book. And I can, and so the, this answer is more applicable to that. You know, Jack learned um, the lesson that uh, he that he that to make things his. You know, like that when he when he got kicked out of Twitter, he felt that he had been unjustly kicked out of Twitter. Um, and certain people agree with him, and certain people disagree with him. And as it's as a reader, it's up to you to decide. 
and that's the way I kind of wrote the story. But when he started Square, he ensured that was never going to happen. Right. Again. You know, he owns the majority of the company. He picks the board. He is the chairman. He is yeah. the CEO. And he learned a lot of valuable lessons. Um, and, and, you know, I think that's really fascinating. Um, I think Ev learned the importance of family, actually. Um, he, uh, Noah learned the same thing. But Ev, you know, wanted to be, you know, a, a, a big person that ran a big company. He came from Nebraska, the small town farm. And he, he had built some really big, impressive things. He wanted to be known for being a product visionary. And I think that he... He did those things. He contributed to all these things. He, he like, you know, just like Jack, has started multiple very successful businesses. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, when he was betrayed by the board, the board turned on him behind his back um, and betrayed by some of the people that worked for him that had also turned on him. Um, I think he realized, you know, that he had been successful. He contributed to society and that his family was really important to him. And, yeah. uh, and, and that, was, that was really interesting. And for me... Um, I think that I learned, you know, the, I, one of the stories that I, I actually learned the most was um, when, when, when all these guys got together and started this business, um, they didn't start it as a business. They started it as a, um, in, as a hope for, as a cure for loneliness, yeah. you know? So I think that you, when you're in your twenties um, or even older or younger, you, you, you're, you're, you, you go through this phase where you don't know what you want to do with your life and, and you feel alone and you feel lonely. And, and in the past you probably, you know, you would have like tried being goth for a little while. You'd have done right. this or that. <laughs> and now you, you turn to social media, you, right. you try to find friends and connections on social media. You post something really funny or obnoxious or, or whatever it is on Twitter or Instagram it's or Facebook. It's the virtual world. And so you, and right. you, and you look for those likes. Right. And, um, and, and I went through this. I, I, um, uh, I had gone through a, a, a breakup and, um, and was trying to seek out, right when I was writing this book, I was trying to seek out connections through technology. And I realized that's not how you get these connections. It's through, it's through human interaction. And these guys, every single one of them learned that through this process. Hmm. When they started Twitter, they, they all were going through a personal crisis. Jack was, was single and alone and didn't have any friends. Noah was going through a divorce. You know, um, Biz and his wife were completely broke. Um, you know, Ev was being, he was petrified that he'd be known as a one hit wonder and would never do anything great again. And they all had these things and also the employees and, and they thought that, that this company was going to be able to connect them with each other and that they could say, I'm going to bed and every, and their friends on Twitter, which is the first night they ever used it. They said, you know, have a great night, sleep well. It was like a big dormitory. And I think as the product evolved and, and exploded in the way it did, they all turned around at one point or another and realized uh, okay, technology doesn't connect us right. in the ways that it's going, going to cure loneliness, but it does connect us in other ways. It connects us in business. It connects us with other people. What it facilitates, like Facebook, I don't feel like people have better. I live with the Amish for two and a half years. No electricity, no, obviously, cell phones. And um, like you said, there is no replacement for physical proximity. Yeah. But to the extent that Twitter and Facebook can get you that proximity exactly well that's the the the, the very and i'm not going to read it uh, but at the very end of the book is a perfectly poignant experience um showing how technology doesn't connect us and yet it does connect us um, yeah so i will let the, yeah, it's, i will it's let a, the i will let the viewers read read that part to 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 see what i'm talking about awesome so hatching twitter new york times bestseller here with nick bolton Make sure a Bolton, not Bolton. Although, well, could be Bolton would I be a the right cool hair. if he had. <laughs> I, I actually, I, I'll tell you a story privately about uh, Mr. Bolton. That's funny. But Nick Bolton and I, you know, I recommend books here. I only recommend books that I've actually read. I've read this one one and a half times because I came back around uh, to read it again for this one, and I think these bio whether they're autobiographies or biographies like this are one of the best ways to stay motivated, to learn without making the mistakes yourself. And uh, so go out and get it. Now, Nick, mm. where's the best way for people to reach you? Is it Twitter? It is. I don't tweet that much lately because <laughs> I am no working iron. on I, the irony. I'm working on my next book. Um, uh, but, um, but it's Twitter. Um, and uh, Facebook or Instagram. I'm, I'm at Nick Bilton on pretty much any 
product or service that is out there. And you've got a book. Look forward to it. I'm look, I, I actually love this title. Tell them what the next book's coming well, out. Well, we don't have a title yet, but the next book is um, is going to be about the Silk Road and the Dread Pirate Roberts, who is the... Not the Dread Pirate Roberts, like from uh, the, Princess the Bride. But, yeah. but, a, but a version of him. Um, it's this guy, um, Ross Ulbricht, who was a... Um, uh, a, a really, really smart, sweet kid from from Austin, Texas, who had this idea to build a website where you could buy and sell drugs, and it became a uh, multi hundred million dollar uh, enterprise before the FBI, DEA, HSI, you name it, um, captured him. So it was like a black market eBay. Basically. It was a black market eBay, but it's it is. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be a crazy it's a, story. It's a crazy story that you know there are DEA agents that become that are supposed to be informants, but end up. Um, actually becoming undercover uh, drug dealers, but and they ended up in jail. And like, it's just, uh, it's it's a wild. There's, there are murders that didn't happen, but they thought happened, and you know, it's it's a wild, wild, wild story. So it's um, it's it's going to be a good one. All right, Mr. Bilton. Thank you. Make sure you uh, everybody listening grab the book. And uh, if you're in the accelerator, we're going to do uh, my my uh, other program. We're going to be talking on. The lessons on money, entrepreneurship, and uh, marketing. So, tylopez.com signing off. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah.